Uh, can anybody see the shirt? What's going on, everybody? Uh, Kevin, back, uh, Chicken Wings, whichever you want to call me on this account, but uh, either way, I am officially done with everything Siege. Southeast Game Exchange is over. It went by like a breeze in the wind. That was a lot of fun. I didn't know how the whole weekend was going to go, but do check out the vlog if you haven't had a chance yet. Like, just uh, go to wherever the video's at and uh, feel free to watch over it. I know that I said uh, it was gonna be a part one. I just shoved it all together, so it was a pretty good lengthy video. Uh, thank you to everybody who was a part of the They're Looking For video. Like, every content creator that was on it, uh, Retro Gaming Pandemic, Mort's Garage, uh, Pixel Game Squad, Scott, uh, Scott Squatch, Caleb, uh, Phoenix Resell, Saturn Steve, uh, I, 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 there's so many names, you would have to go back and rewatch it. But this is a recap video of everything I picked up at the event. But to start things off, this is going to be a running gag for the whole pickups video. Uh, first off, the first thing I got when I joined, or not joined, when I got to the event, was getting my first ever Southeast Game Exchange shirt. Uh, shout outs to Austin and staff. You guys blew it out of the water uh, for my first time experience. I mean, I've been to a lot of gaming conventions before, but when they say that Siege is like one of the best out there, they're not joking. And there were deals to be had at the event. So you'll see that in just a sec. So the first thing that I ended up getting, uh, this was a deal that I had hoped to get in time before Siege because I was going to use any extras for trade bait. But it was a stack of Nintendo Powers. Now, the only one that's like the worst condition of the bunch yeah, DuckTales, unfortunately, is not in the uh, the greatest of condition. This is uh, September, October of 1989. This was uh, one that I think I am going to be covering over later. But regardless of that, a uh, couple of them that I ended up getting that I'm pretty excited about. I'll we'll be using that for the for maybe a convention. So you'll get some deals at the booth if you're over at Cla Cla the Duh. A Cleveland Gaming Classic. There we go. Said it first time. So there were a few games that I picked up at the event. You'll see the other one in just a bit, and I'll kind of explain that and why I ended up snacking. <laughs> but one of them that I had to get for DS, and I was pretty excited about it, which I got from the Video Game Cavern, which they're over in Taylor's, South Carolina. That's over at Wade Hampton's Boulevard. So... Big shout out to them, and it was a copy of Fantasy Star Zero. I already took the card out, but everything was like in really mint condition. And I wanted to get this one because I saw the footage of it, it looked a lot of fun. Of course, the other one I had to get because I'm a Super Robot Wars fan. They wouldn't go down on the price, understandable, since it's a factory sealed title, but it was for the Nintendo Switch, Super Robot Wars 30. And I'm probably going to end up upgrading the ones I have on the Vita to the ones on Switch because bigger screen and just runs better. But Super Robot Wars has always been a personal favorite of mine. I remember first playing Super Robot Wars J and that was a ROM hack because it was a English translation. But Super Robot Wars 30 is, yeah, 30 years of Super Robot Wars, which is uh, pretty wild to see. So I'm excited to be able to try this one out. Continuing with the theme of Nintendo Power Magazines, uh, the booth that was advertising for the Retro Toy uh, Convention Federation. Only problem with it is the uh, the barcode, but that's that's not a big issue for me. But it was Nintendo Power for Donkey Kong Country. And this was volume 66. But yeah, I mean, it's like, even the spine was in good condition. And honestly, I probably could have like got the rest of them because everybody at the convention, me included, usually do sell ours for like $15 or more. But yeah, that was a good deal on that. And since I am a fan of Tatsunoko Productions, because of a lot of anime I grew up on, I got me a Tatsunoko t-shirt, and yeah, it's got a Patsu Man, Hashern on the corner, and of course, Techman Blade, or not Techman Blade, I said the same thing like at the same booth. 
But yeah, they're, uh, the artwork on this is phenomenal. And I don't know when this was printed, but I'm going to guess around the time when Tatsunoko vs. Capcom was getting produced over on the Nintendo Wii. So I am uh, pretty excited to be able to own that one. Uh, freebie that was uh, from my good friend Drink Games. Drink and Games with Josh. I keep forgetting how it's properly pronounced. And it, it's a, it's a slipcover for like an NES game. So that that's actually pretty cool. And they're produced by Video Game Dust Sleeves. So um, I might end up doing some for, I don't know, Game On Network or something. I don't know. That's kind of an idea for... I don't know, future product, whatever. But of course, I uh, got to meet Josh at the event. Unfortunately, I didn't get him in for the little uh, Q&A thing that I did, but overall, uh, really good to finally meet Josh in person, and he's been a fan of Uncommon Valley since it first started. So thank you very much for the support, and go support his channel. Again, drink, uh, drink games with Josh. So at the booth where I sold the Budokai Tenkaichi 3, uh, there was a gentleman that saw that I had the, uh, the Konami Top Gun LCD handheld. Uh, got that at like a yard sale a little while ago. But he ended up doing a couple of trades for some books that I'm just going to end up selling at the booth. But it was issues uh, volume 26 and 29 for Nintendo Power. And yeah, they're, uh, they're obviously not the best condition, but I'm probably just gonna end up selling them for about the same price that I picked them up for for trade. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good to be able to see them. I remember them from uh, Game Jam South was where I first got uh, some stuff from and then I did actually get some Nintendo Power from them, so. I, it's always a pleasure to be able to meet them again. And then uh, it was at the very end of the convention. I didn't film this particular pickup, but this is one of the early issues of Game Informer magazine. This is uh, quite the surprise. I got this for, I think it was like 10 bucks. Originally it was 15, but it was like close to the end of the convention. And like I said, I hardly ever see the original Game Informers. And it's like, you see all the newer ones, but not any of the retro style ones. But yeah, definitely cool. Uh, might end up having to do this for a separate channel, maybe? I don't know, because I thought about doing Gaming Magazine YouTube channel stuff again. And who knows, uh, if you would like to see that, uh, put down in the comment. All right, uh, the booth from earlier, like day one, uh, I think I ended up getting one of the other games you'll see in a bit, but there was a bunch of magazines and I had to go over everything, but there was March, April 1990, which was for Super Mario 3. Then of course there was volume 22, volume 46, and then there was volume 41 and 28 as well. And this was the other thing, like, they uh, they priced the Nintendo Powers accordingly, and this was the other thing I didn't think to see at the event, and they were the only booth that had, like, good condition copies of Sega Visions magazine. Now, these are not easy to come across. There's, like, too many that I ended up getting. There's, like, one for the Sega CD, uh, Street Fighter II, yeah, Sonic Spinball, and then there was like a Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, let me see if I can actually find Yeah, I found it. Like, that is, uh, that's pretty cool to be able to see that, because that was actually my first Sega Genesis game I ever played. But he, uh, he gave me a good deal on them. Like, he was selling them for like five bucks each. So I think he couldn't really find a price on them, so I'm happy paying that, because... I don't know, I just like collecting old vintage gaming magazines, stuff like that. All right, and then, of course, the two biggest pickups of the entire show. Uh, I'll actually save that one first. Uh, mostly continue with the uh, Nintendo Power magazine, well, just paper book stuff. And the vendor I got this from, the biggest pickup I wanted to get was a issue number one of Nintendo Power. And everywhere I went, there was like no one that had them. And there was another booth that had a copy of Nintendo Power, 
But the story behind this one, to me, was much more interesting. Now, the vendor I filmed for the video, and he, as soon as he was talking about, like, how it was basically his original copy, or just, like, his family's original copy, for that matter, to me was a bit of, like, a very somber story about how a lot of times when people have stuff like this on hand that they usually have good stories to tell. And you can tell that, yeah, there's like markings on it where it's been creased and opened. And yeah, the poster is obviously damaged, but honestly, I'm just happy to be able to take one with me and to give this Nintendo Power a home. So maybe if we do get a better condition copy, then I will probably end up upgrading. But this to me was, one of my most requested finds and now i have a nintendo power number one and then of course uh the only other thing video game related that i ended up getting this is one that was on my once list for a long time and the price has only been going up further and they were the cheapest out of the whole entire con and that's a copy of Sola Turobo. Yeah, they were showing it where it's like the soundtrack has never been opened. And I know that the soundtrack itself is expensive, if you can find that out in the wild. Now, while it is very sad to be able to see Storm Grinder and Xevious for the 32X Go, I'm pretty sure I can find those at a later date. It's not a big deal because this was one game that was on my heavily once list for a while. And the fact that I now have one of the most expensive and rarest Nintendo DS games out there is pretty wild. And yeah, it was $400. Everybody was like $450 to $500 if it was like in the actual packaging. So I don't have their card. You'll have to go back to watch the video again. But huge thank out, uh, thank, huge thank you for the even trade that was uh that was incredible to be able to deal with so thank you very much for that and that is it that is everything siege unless i decide to put up any youtube shorts or any other type of videos but this video has gone on long enough as it is but thank you to everybody who showed up at the console conflict panel that was a blast. We will be editing that up and putting it up over on the Game On Network YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to that, uh, do so. Uh, I think it's just Game On Network, and you can search Console Conflict on YouTube as well. But that is it. I love you all very, very much. Thank you for the welcoming atmosphere at the show this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. And you can count me in to go in for 2024. So with that being said, Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out all of the videos, the vlogs, everything that took place. And hope to see you back on the next video that we have lined up. So until then, you know how this is. High five.